Hi everyone, welcome back to the IELTS online series, uh, day 13 and in this class we'll continue with the reading section and we will discuss the question types, the remaining question types of the reading section in this class. In this class, we are going to talk about the true false not given question type and let us first look at the strategy for this question. Um, so the first strategy for this question is uh, again always read the instructions very carefully very important for every question type especially in this question type because the question may be a true false not given question or it may be a yes no not given question if the question is a true false not given question you'll have to mention the word true or false or not given in your answers if the question is a yes no not given question you'll have to mention yes or no or not given in your answers uh, so that is why it becomes very important for you to read the instructions in this question especially in an exam scenario where you are a little bit anxious about the exam probably and if you are not paying attention to the instructions um you know you may even though you are putting the effort and you're getting all the answers correct but if it's a yes no question and you're marking the sentences as true or false or not given you will not be marked and you will be marked incorrect so please make sure that you are reading the instructions uh, now a lot of students do ask as to you know why the instructions are different even though the questions and the functions of the questions are almost same you know why this difference difference between a yes no not given and a true false not given question type uh, so the difference between um, you know the reason why you would get a true false not given question in a certain passes and a yes no not given question in a different passes is the fact that um, is is about the kind of passes that you're reading now let's say yes no not given question generally comes in the passes where you know they deal with opinion if the passes is an opinion based question you will see a yes no not given question if the passes is something that deals with facts you are going to see a true false not given question now don't worry this is not something that you have to identify in the exam uh, this is just an extra fyi information for you guys uh, moving on again before jumping on to the passes first of all we are going to read the statements that has been given in the question very carefully understand the meaning of the whole sentence and underline the major keywords that we see in the question now this is something that we did in the previous question type as well make sure that in the reading section before you jump on to reading the passes you read the questions first underline the keywords understand their meaning do not spend a lot of time doing this uh, but while practicing you may take some more time than it is required but in the exam you should you know be very prompt with understanding the context and reading the question types um, the next strategy for this question type is there are a few things that you should pay more attention to such as these words you know some all mainly each most often always uh, and occasionally and these are just samples of these kinds of words now these kinds of words can completely change the meaning of an entire sentence for example let's say if in the passes you know uh, all books are pretty much difficult is an information that has been given but in the statement uh, the statement mentions some books are difficult now in this case because of one word you know the meaning of the sentence is not similar in the passes and in the question statement and hence you should be really careful about these kinds of words if you see them um, you know in the statement you should also be careful about the verbs for example um, suggest claim believe and know um, now the next uh, strategy or next step in a true false not given question would be to aware would be to be aware of the kind of synonyms that you may see in the passes when it comes to the kind of words that you're going to see in the statement right so you have to be aware of synonyms and rephrasing uh, you know uh, that the writer is going to use in the paragraph in comparison to the words that has been given in the question another strategy is to identify the correct part of the text that matches to the statement so obviously we have already mentioned that we are going to use a strategy of scanning for this question type so you'll have to scan the correct kind of words uh, from the question statement while also being aware about the 
kind of words that the um kind of rephrasing or vocabulary that has been changed in the past is and you have to cor- identify the correct part that gives you the answer for this question for the question that you are looking at now the next step is obviously to read the statement again and carefully match the information that has been given in the statement with the information that has been given in the part that you have identified by scanning the keywords and you should come on to the conclusion whether the statement that has been given is true or false or not given uh depending on you know depending on the matching that you just did so to mark the statement true the meaning of the statement should match exactly to that of the statement that has been given in the question if there is a little bit of discrepancy you should be able to come to a conclusion to decide whether the information is not accurately matching or you should also come to the conclusion that is this information really being talked about or not because you may find keywords but however the information that has been given in the statement um uh, may not be talked about in the passes at all right so depending on the kind of uh, information it is you are going to mark the statement as true false not given or not given and finally it is always wise to underline the words that you have found in the text um uh, that is giving you the answer this will help you identify and you can check back later so it's always good to you know uh, underline the keywords if you are taking a paper based test um from the question so that just in case if you f- feel any kind of confusion you can always come back to the that part of the text and uh, you know um check whether you are you have uh, chosen your answer correctly or incorrectly if the answer cannot be found mark it as not given and move on to the next question so these are the strategies for a true false not given question type and let us solve one question of this ty- of this type um you can download um Uh, to solve this question you can download the passes called development of london underground railway i believe that we have already used this passes in uh, in the, while doing the previous question type uh, however for students who have not you can download this from cambridge al 17 test 1 passes 1 and this is a sample question of a true false not given question and we can also identify the question type by reading the question um reading the question instructions which is right through uh, true if the statement agrees with the information false if the statement contradicts the information and not given if there is no information on this so it the instructions for this question are actually pretty much clear and all we have to do is mark the statements that has been given here as true false or not given now obviously as per the strategies that um, that we just discussed the first thing that we are going to do is look at all the questions here and try to Uh, understand the keyword that has been given here so here the keyword could be underground railways metropolitan line right more people than predicted travel on the metropolitan line on first day so in this case predicted first day could be our keyword now i do not want to you know underline the um keyword such as metropolitan line which i'm going to find in every question because the passage is going to use this common keyword all the times and it's not going to help us help us much so try to find uh, keywords or words that you think you'll not find often in the passes another keyword here is ventilation shafts that fail to prevent pollution failed could also be a keyword tunnels can also be a keyword here a different approach is keywords cut and cover technique is a major keyword here london central area is also a major keyword here the windows windows is a major keyword here city and south london is another keyword i can also be a very important keyword for us because these words are going to help us you know scan for where we can find this information in the passes city and south london railway again another keyword financial and success can be keywords here tippany tube is a major keyword and uh, time can be another keyword here all right on time basically uh, so let us now try to scan for these words so the first thing that we are going to do is solve question number 1 and we start looking for the word metropolitan line and underground railways so we find the uh, word metropolitan line way before we find it in the fifth paragraph however while we try to scan for the uh, scan while however if we try to you know read for the information we do not find that context and we finally find the context in paragraph number 5 which is um, which is the which is for the word the metropolitan line was the world's first underground railway hence the information that has been given here which mentions that other countries had built underground railways before the metropolitan line opened is a false statement right so the correct statement is in fact that um 
it was the first was first underground railway and hence the information that has been given here is false moving on to the next question we find the word uh, predicted and on its first day in the same paragraph and as we continue reading on its first day almost 40000 passengers were carried between paddington and farringdon the journey taking about 18 minutes by the end of the metropolitan politan's first year of operation 9.5 million journeys had been made now i do not see any information in regard to the fact that if this number is greater or less than the you know a predicted number because no information has been given about the prediction of the number of passengers i am going to mark this statement as not given moving on we find the word ventilation shafts and pollution in paragraph number 6 uh so as you can see here we can see the words ventilation ventilation shafts were added to the tunnels while the statement says that the use of vent ventilation shafts fell to prevent pollution in the tunnels let us see what does the passage tell us so let us read a little bit from uh, above so that you can understand the context instead the line used specially designed locomotives that were fitted with water tanks and with steam could be condensed however smoke and fumes remained a problem even though ventilation shafts were added to the tunnels and hence this information is true because foams and fumes remained a problem and hence the ventilation shafts did uh, fail to prevent pollution in the tunnels from here cut and cover technique is a major keyword and we find the word cut and cover technique in the 7th paragraph as you can see here so let us read to find uh if we if the statement is true false or not given a different approach from the cut and cover technique was required in the london central area while the passage mentions the cut and cover method of construction was not an option in this part of the capital the only alternative was to tunnel deep underground so this information is in fact true because a different approach which is the tunnel deep underground approach is actually required in the london central area which has been also given here all right for the next question the i and windows can be our keywords here and we find these words in paragraph number 8 so let us see where we can find the word i so we can see the word windows here so let us read the carriages were narrow and had tiny windows just below the roof because it was thought that passengers would not want to look out at the tunnel wall so even though we do not find the word i we do it has been rephrased as to look out at the tunnel walls and hence from this statement we can come to the conclusion that the windows were not at eye level because it had they had really tiny windows and they were just below the roof and they had assumed that you know patients uh, sorry <laughs> passengers do not want to look out the window and hence it was above the eye level so this information is actually false as per the passage that has been given here the city and south london railway was a financial success so let us look for the word financial because city and south london is a word that has that i have found at multiple places so i would rather look for a word that uh, is a synonym of financial and we can find the word the city and south london here um so let us read quickly scan quickly to see if we was a great technical achievement so uh, a word achievement in uh, could be a rephrase of success but i'm looking for something that was financial so profit is another rephrasing for financial so in this case as well um uh, this information is actually false because it did not make a profit so tipney tube is another keyword here and we find the word tipney tube here so let us read the question and the information that has been given in the passes trains on tipney tube nearly always run on time as per the passes then in 1990 the central london railway known as the uh, tipney tube began operation using new electric it was very popular and were added to the growing um, but i after even reading in detail i do not see any information re in regards to whether it ran on time or it did not so i'm going to mark this question as not given so this is how you are required to solve a true false not given question type is pretty much straightforward look at the keywords focus on um, focus on the kind of rephrases and vocabulary that the question can use and depending on that and come to a conclusion as to the statement that has been given is true or false or not given the next variety of this question could be a yes no not given question type the strategies are going to be exactly same as to whatever we discuss in the true false not given question type for this question type here is a question sample 
and you can download this question from the passage called to catch a king and uh, it's in the IL 17 Cambridge IL 17 book test one passage three and here is a sample of a true false of a yes no not given question so you can clearly see in the question that the question requires you to write yes or no or not given instead of true or false or not given now you have to be very careful in the exam about the instructions if you are not careful and you know you are um, writing true or false or not given in a yes or no or not given question they are not going to score you right so please make sure that you are reading the um, questions um, instructions very carefully moving on to next important question type is a matching information question type and let us look at the strategy for this question so to begin with obviously the answers are not in order for this question for true false not given i had mentioned that the answers are always going to be in order uh, so you know that where are you going to find the answer for question number two if you have already found the question number one and three right but in this case the answers are not going to be in the order as per the order of the question um it i recommend that uh, you do this question last because this question is actually a little bit difficult question type where you have to find specific inf information which you may find anywhere in the passes uh, and hence you have to you know know a lot from the passes and that is why it is recommended for you to do this question last because while doing other question types you can actually you know read in detail few paragraphs from the passes and while you actually start doing this question you are already accustomed to the information that has been given in the passes and hence it will be easier for you to solve this question but obviously this is just a recommendation and a strategy it may work for a lot of students and it may not so try it out and see if it works for you the next is obviously to read the questions very carefully then um, read the questions uh, first and think about the synonyms and how it could rephrase so um, just like in all other question types where we read the questions underline the keywords we are going to do the same in this case as well after we are done underlining the keywords unlike in the previous question types we are not just going to scan for the keywords because if we do that it is going to take a lot of time for us so in this case what we are going to do is after looking for the keywords we are going to the passes we are skimming the entire passes so skimming again is a very important strategy of the reading section skimming is basically quick reading now this is where um, you know what is the speed of your reading is going to be in use for the IELTS reading section so you should quickly be able to understand the objective of each paragraph the connections between each paragraph and the you know the objective of entire passes as to what is the objective of of writing the passes for the writer so you should be able to do that by skimming the entire passes then again now since you have a rough idea as to what is in what paragraph go back to the question statements again and predict which paragraph contains the contains the answers scan the text paragraphs now we are also going to use the skill that you have we have used in other questions which is scanning now after you have a rough idea as to you know um you information ko bare ma first page tira kura gareko cha athwa second page tira kura gareko cha athwa first paragraph athwa end tira kura gareko cha now you, after predicting go and start scanning for specific keywords now instead of scanning for words throughout the passes you just have to scan it you know through one to two paragraphs and that will make your work a lot easy scan the text paragraph you think might contain the answer for synonyms if you find a possible answer underline it check back with the question statements and mark answer if correct if not move on to other paragraphs so that was the strategy for matching information question the first thing that we are going to do is um, read and underline the keywords go back to the passes uh, skim the entire passes return to the question statements predict what paragraphs could contain the information that has been given in the question um, if you are if you can predict exactly you know the right paragraph find the part which gives the information and move on to next question if for some questions you can actually predict two to three paragraphs start scanning for the keywords and wherever you find the information read in detail to mark your answer uh, so here is a sample for a matching information question and you can download it from the passes uh, from the Cambridge IL 17 and you can find it in uh, test one passes two and the passes is called past present and future uh, stadiums past present and future um, so this is a sample of a matching information question and this question instruction goes like this 
which section contains the following information uh, so basically 14 15 16 and 17 are the informations that has been given in the question and the uh, question is asking you to find this information as to um, which paragraph the paragraph are uh, sequenced as a to g and which paragraph do you think contains this information and you are supposed to rank these information as a to g depending on the number the number of paragraph that you have correlated it to now let us look at the answers for this question and you can do this um, um uh, you can do this question uh, to see whether you can do this question by employing the strategies that we have just discussed and let us look at the answers for this question so the first question mentions a mention of negative attitudes to our stadium building projects and we find this information in paragraph number of a by uh, with because paragraph number a gives words such as however which is again a contrast marker stadiums are regarded with growing skepticism which is a word for negative attitudes and uh, we also the question also talks about building projects so construction costs can show above 1 billion pounds and stadiums finished for major events such as olympic games have notably fallen into disuse and disrepair disrepair so this uh, information actually gives us our answer of question number one Question number two can be found in paragraph F. So basically question number F talks about figures demonstrating the environmental benefits of a stadium. And by figures, we actually mean the kind of numbers which demonstrates, you know, what are the environmental benefits of happening, which are happening for a certain stadium. So Freiburg um, made solar stadium in Germany is a certain stadium about which the information given is talking and uh, is talking about. And the kind of figures that they have shown is you know has 8844 photo panels producing up to electricity annually this reduces the annual output of carbon dioxide by 660 tons and supplies up to 80 percent of the surrounding area when so blah 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 you know so positive impact in terms of reduction in co2 emission so this gives us our answer that uh, this certain stadium is uh, you know a stadium in germany which has um, about which numbers and data are being talked about in the passes and the passage which talks about this is paragraph number f moving on examples of the wide range of facilities available at some new stadiums um, so this information can be found in paragraph number e where um, at new stadium there is a growing trend for stadiums so obviously some new stadiums is being talked about with public spaces and services beyond sport uh, such as hotels so these are the kinds of facilities that are being offered and finally for this question reference to the disadvantages of the stadiums built during a certain era so that era is 20th century and we can find this information in paragraph number d and the disadvantages are basically many such stadiums are situated in suburban areas designed for sporting use only surrounded by this factors mean that they may not be as accessible to the general public require more energy to run and contribute to urban heat so these are the disadvantages of the stadiums that are built during uh, that were built during 20th century yes so please make sure that you are employing the strategies for this question type and then you can easily solve this question as well now this was all about today's class and i'll see you guys in next class where we will discuss the remaining question types thank you